Peg. Okay. Thank you, Trevison. I'll be your moderator for this evening's lecture. And I'd like to welcome you to another lecture presented by the Syracuse class. This is a school and not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organizations. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh or Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Since that time, we have established branch schools throughout the United States and in various parts of the world. The Syracuse branch was established in 1969. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you the Dean of the Syracuse branch, Dr. Patrick Trevison. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title, the Father, the Word, or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name, of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word of Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of the physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5, that there are Lord's many and God's many, but we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it's an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by the letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English alphabet until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of the Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man cannot perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading a preface to the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it's Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof how that everything in the universe is made 
and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, then absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary constitutional objectives and aims of the Institute are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yash the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Four, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, compared religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation of faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Nine, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, save in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Ten, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the newer state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. And I'd like to have this evening's meeting dedicated with a prayer by Dr. Um, uh, Dr. Bruce Geller from our Oceanside class. Our scripture readers this evening will be Dr. Deb Kometty and Dr. Scott Miller from the Syracuse class. And the scripture reading this evening is Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Thank you, Peg. Good, good afternoon and, and evening to everyone. And may we all bow our hearts and minds in a moment of prayer unto our heavenly Father Yahweh, who has seen fit to bring us all together one more time so we can come into a greater knowledge and understanding of him and his son, Yahshua. We wanna thank you, Yahweh, for giving us this great gift and giving us the true gospel of Yahshua, the Messiah, that will actually do something for someone. And it certainly has done a lot for us and we are very appreciative of it. We just ask you to settle us down from the cares and the worries of this world and let us concentrate on the things that are being said. And we ask Yahweh, if there be anything within us that is not pleasing in your eyesight, that you remove it and just give us clarity of thought and help us in these last days because the adversary is doing everything he can to throw us off the track. And we know that if we just keep our heart and mind on you, Yahshua, that you'll carry us through and cause us to endure unto the end. We thank you and we ask you for these things in the name of the most holy name of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Let us all say. Hallelujah. 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 Good evening and afternoon, class. Tonight's scripture will be read out of the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts revised by A.B. Trena of the Scripture Research Association. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. I, therefore, the prisoner of Elohim, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Elohim, one faith, one baptism. One is Yahweh and the Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of the Messiah. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, 
He took captive captivity and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fulfill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the sons, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of the Messiah. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of Yahweh unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of the Messiah that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But being truthful in love, ye may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even the Messiah, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and, comp and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. This I say, therefore, and exhort through Yahweh, that ye henceforth, li henceforth li live not as the heathen live in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of Elohim through the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lustful practices to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned from the Messiah. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Yahshua, that ye put off your former behavior, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after Elohim is created in righteousness and true holiness, wherefore putting away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, we are members one of another. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the adversary. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give him that need it. Let no corrupt conversation proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of the edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of Yahweh, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as Yahweh forgave them, even as Yahweh for the Messiah's sake hath forgiven you. That's Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Thank you, Dr. Miller and Dr. Geller. And our first speaker for this evening's class, I'd like to introduce Dr. Andrea Volpe from the Oceanside class. Andrea. Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me okay? You can. Perfect. It's always a pleasure to be around the brethren and hear anything about Yahshua, especially with the chaotic and depressing state of the world these days. Um, I actually am, I don't have much on my mind right now, but I am happy to sit back and listen to other people who do. And I don't want to waste anybody's time rambling. So I just want everybody to know I love you very much. And thank Yashua for each and every one of you. And with that, I'm going to take my seat. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Volpe, very much. And our next speaker, also from Oceanside, California, Dr. Bruce Geller. He's coming. Okay. Um, here, let me bring it to you. Just start talking. Oh, I'm going to uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, thank you, Peg, and everyone mm -hmm. else for your for your patience. Um, no I I'm sorry to say that uh, I uh, am on some very very strong medication. 
and I uh, I'm going to defer mm -hmm. because um, you know it's difficult when you are on medication to try to focus in, and I would rather um, not speak right now. But I uh, I am uh, my testimony is the same as as uh, Andrea's. I'm I'm glad to be a part of class, and I uh, am thankful but I am going to have to defer. So I will do that. Thank you. No problem at all. Thank you, Dr. Geller. Our next speaker this evening will be um, sorry. Uh, the Vice President of the Syracuse branch, Dr. John Cometti. Um, thank you. Um, Geez, I mean, uh, I don't want to go three and out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so if I was the second, maybe I would, but I'll, we'll see what uh -oh. we'll go here. So um, Paul, in this letter and um, that he's writing, he's talking about this uh, community of faith <clears throat> um, that would be in, come together and how that they would walk in accordance with the heavenly calling that was set forth for them. And um, <clears throat> that some would go out and demonstrate, but remember one thing also, when we talk and look at the pur pur uh, purpose of Yahweh, uh, these things break down and we bring it right to ourselves. So if we're talking about a community of faith, or this body collectively of um, the believers of Yahshua the Messiah, which is making up that gracious body. When we think of that community, within that community of faith, we're going to have different levels of um, understanding. We're going to have different levels as far as gifts. Um, and uh, these gifts will be more highlighted in one individual as another individual. But, uh, you know, since coming down here, I've come to new understand that we just don't leave these things out there. And this community of faith that we're looking at and talking about is also going to operate right within us. And um, I remember one time having a conversation about if you had the Holy Spirit, you have all those gifts, okay? We're not lacking any of the gift, though someone may have a highlighted gift of, we'll say, the physical body. Somebody may have um, history. Somebody may have a great understanding of the Bible in itself. Do you know what I'm saying? But that doesn't mean that um, we're lacking in any of it. We're looking at that community of faith, okay, um, operating both outside and inside of a physical body. And we even talk about that um, in, our, in our moderation. We say Jeff, when we talk you about... Lot. Don, you're really breaking up a lot. Oh, then... I don't know what's going on. You got a bad connection or something? I don't know. I'm getting like He's every not, other word. He, He's not for me. He's not breaking up for me. Oh, okay. It's just me. Yeah, he's, Let's he's go. Oh. He's clear. Sorry. Um, okay. So, so we have this community of faith that I'm talking about that we're going to be witnessing both outside, you see, of us, or you see, in a physical body. And we say that even in our own moderation. We say Yahshua the Messiah, and I'm talking about the body of Yahshua the Messiah in, the, in, you see, us collectively being in this community of faith, okay? Um, and we say Yahshua the Messiah, whether in a body or out of a body, you see, preach, you know? And again, if we keep ourselves and don't let our, don't let our, our, our understanding be opened up, you know, um, that that's very well that Dr. Kinley 
could have made that statement. I'm not disputing that he didn't. But what was he talking about when he made that statement? Was he was talking about not everybody having the gift to get up and preach from the floor? Because I asked the individual whose father was only, I believe, up once and all of his class life on the floor. I said, did your father ever teach you anything? And he said, well, of course he did. I go, so then that makes him a teacher, but he's not capable of getting up on the floor and expressing these things, you know? So don't limit our, don't limit our, our, mm -hmm. the power that Yahweh has brought uh, upon us, in us, okay? Now, I was, um, I wanna, I wanna go, and I, cause these are goals, you see, that can be achieved in this age. So let's have the aims, if we could have them put back up, please. And as Paul is addressing this community uh, and talking about this community of faith and how we're going to witness, you know, these gifts, and we appreciate, and we, we enjoy those gifts, but, but, but don't feel that you don't, you know, um, have those gifts. They are there. They're just more highlighted, you know, in, um, in others. Uh, we have the aims. There we go. Yeah. Now, um, we look at that first one and it says, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and, and actually exists. So in this age, we are capable of understanding our creator and who he is and how he actually exists, right? Now, we were left with these scriptures. And if the scripture readers could just um, start getting you know, uh, the Matthew, uh, we don't have to get everyone here, but let's get like Matthew 11, 27, uh, second best Corinthians, John. Uh, Matthew 11, 27, all things are delivered unto me by my father and no man knows the son, but the father Neither knows any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. So this is this is a scripture to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. And we come down and we understand that Yahweh in a pure spirit state of existence. We recognize and we give that name Yahweh to. Now, when Yahweh chose to intermingle with mankind, he did that in a visionary shape and form. That's how he chose to communicate with mankind. And he brought the man Moses up the mountain and showed him a vision, okay? and gave him a revelation of that vision. And he appeared unto him, you see, as a man. So we have Yahweh here on this chart depicted as a cloud, as was said in the moderation. Um, Moses in the cloud looking out where it says panoramic vision, Elohim to Moses. That would be how Yahweh chose to appear to Moses at that particular event, I'll say, or his, whatever you want to say, but at that particular time, that's how Yahweh chose to re reveal himself to Moses, you see. And then as the scripture we had just read, talked about, later on, the same Yahweh manifested himself in a physical body that we know, you see, as Yahshua, okay? 
or that at that time in his purpose, what the gift that was going to be then was that Yahweh, that that state that 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 had purpose to purpose, that had no man seen or heard the voice of. See, then we have him in a shape and a form that man did hear, you see, the voice of this one that we recognize as Yahweh Elohim, and then in a physical body, you see, the same Yahweh manifested himself in a physical body and came in as salvation, see, or Yahweh is salvation. And here we see that we have this, this, this self-same one operating in a physical body and outside of a physical body, as we talk about in our moderation, okay? So this, now let's just get a couple more. I want the aims again, a couple more of those scriptures. If one of the readers have them while um, Greg's getting that chart. Um, um, I, I had second Thess one, seven and eight. Go ahead. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When Yahshua shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Now see that when Yahshua shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Go ahead. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh. That and that see, obey. Now look, this is, this is something that we can achieve in this age that can save us and carry us through the next age. Do you see what I'm saying? But we must know Yahweh and how he operates, and he operates according to a unity. Go ahead, um, here. I'm sorry. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh, right. and that obey not the gospel of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. And obey not that gospel, see? And then, then there's, there's, there's that person that wants to know, why are you always talking about blood, water, spirit? That burial resurrection, you follow me? Because that is the gospel of salvation, and there should be no other news in this age other than Yahshua's death, his burial, and his resurrection. Go ahead now. You want another scripture? Or? Yeah, another scripture if you have it. I do want the Ames chart up, back okay. up. Um, the only other one I had was... Uh, third or second Corinthians three and seven. I'll, I'll, I'll take that one. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, now Yahweh is that spirit, and where the spirit of Yahweh is, there is liberty. See, and what did, didn't Yahshua the Messiah when he came in? You see, he gave, that's what he gave liberty. He freed them from that law and all of that. Now look, the second aim, right, is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah. And I want you to see this, when I've seen Paul's writing tonight, this is what I thought about, that this is, you see, a universe, he's speaking to a universal brotherhood, you see, of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah. We're still, you see, in this fleshly age, so a brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah. See, and this is without the distinction of race or nationality or creed or sex or color, right? You see, and, and I want you to see this is, this is where, and, and within this university, universal brotherhood of humanity, we are going to have those gifts within that body highlighted, you see, so that when as many went down to Miami, you see, and enjoyed the fruits of that body, you see, um, that's liberating. That's freedom. You follow me? See, when preached and taught in truth, all right? Now, can we have Ephesians um, 5, uh, 25 and the other speaker just get Acts 10 and 34 first. 
Ephesians 5.25, husbands, love your wives, even as the Messiah also loved the assembly and gave himself for it, that he might right. sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. See, so there's a washing that go, that's taking place, see, but this washing is of the word or that truth that that university, universal brotherhood will be preaching. And there ain't no breaking from that brotherhood, you know? It, it just, it, it, you just can't break from that brotherhood. We can't preach this gospel any other way in this age than that which we were given and that which they preached in the beginning of this age. Because it was preached in the beginning of this age, it's going to be needed the same type of emphasis on the true gospel of salvation. See? And these are things that I, I'm saying to you that the founder put together to let us know we're achievable in this age. Go ahead with Ephesians now. And he might present it to himself a glorious assembly, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, See? but that it should be holy now, and without blemish. I think it was Dr. Volpe the other, no, it was Dr. Emler the other night. I was listening to him Um how they brought Yahshua the Messiah um, before Pilate. And they talked about how there was no fault in that body, you see? And that's witnessing once again, don't leave that out there. There's no fault in your body, you see, if you have Yahshua the Messiah. There's no fault in him. And, 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 and that's, that's proven through the scriptures, you see. Um, now, go ahead, where you are. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. Uh -huh. He that loves his wife loves himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, even as, the, as Joshua, the assembly. So, see, so in this body, we will cherish and we will love, you see, not one another in the sense of who you are, but the gifts that you have been given, you see, to preach this gospel. That's that's what that's that that's the that's the love, you see. Um, and then the next one that we have is um, to investigate the un. Oh wait a minute, we didn't get Acts, did we? Um, we have Acts ten and thirty four. Yes. Then Peter opened his mouth and said. Of a truth, I perceive that Yahweh is no respecter of persons. Right. No, no respecter of persons. Okay. So again, we're we're at that that creed, that sex, that caste, or that color. You see, we can't. You see, play that game and have and possess the Holy Spirit. You see, we can't. We can't love just black, white, red whatever it might be you see okay now the other thing that we um are capable of achieving in this age is the third aim we have we have the the ability to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers that are what but latent in man you see, and that's what I'm talking about. You see, are these powers that are latent within man, all right? And it's going to give us uh, Romans 8, 1 through 4. Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation. Why? Because there's no fault, right? Go ahead. To them who are in the Messiah, Yahshua. Right, go ahead. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Who walk not after the flesh. See, if we get hung up in that sex, creed, and cast, and all that, oh, she's real hot, oh, he's real hot. No. Go ahead, Deb. For the law of the spirit of life in the Messiah, Yahshua, hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Right. So, in other words, that law, that Mosaic law, that many of us, you see, were reintroduced to, 
and put in bondage to, and I'm coming out of Roman Catholicism and I'm talking bondage. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you ever, you know, you ran into one of those nuns on a bad day, but that, that is, that is uh, cruelty. You know what I'm saying? I've, I've both witnessed and been on the other end of that, that ruler. So I can talk about it both ways. Okay. Um, so in other religions, you know, I, I remember, you know, women feeling that they couldn't dress in a, in, a, in, a, in a certain way. So there's all these restrictions and bonds that go along with that law. And I'm going to say the law of sin and death, because that's basically what it was. You see, they gave me the Ten Commandments in my church, the same Ten Commandments that Moses got from Yahweh when he, when he was in a visionary shape and form talking to him. That's where them Ten Commandments came from, and they were given to the Jews and to the Jews only. You see, they weren't given to any Gentiles. There weren't any Gentiles at the bottom of that mouth. But through deception that we're going to get to, we can take care of that in this age. But I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. But um, so let's let's go to where we are in the scriptures. For what the law could not do, that it was weak through the flesh. Yahweh Elohim sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. So it says that Yahweh Elohim sent his own son in the likeness, right? Or got right into that flesh. Go ahead. In the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Right. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So I want you to see. There is an encouragement here, you see, for us to walk in the, the law of the spirit and not in the law of the land. Now, look, we're going to obey the law of the land. I should say it this way, you see. But what we're not going to need to do is think that there is any water, any supper, any that we can take or partake in that is going to give us eternal life or salvation. There is, there is no eternal life and no in salvation in any of that. That's why that physical water that we had read about being cleansed, or that, that water being, being cleansed in is not a physical water. We're talking about being cleansed in the word or the truth. That's why it's important for us to see, help you find and know Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. Because you can understand that it's Yahweh working through, you see, a physical body to bring forth salvation. It's Yahweh working through a visionary shape and form so that some a man might have some form of an understanding of what, a, a, a piece of understanding of what Yahweh in this pure spirit state of existence, you see, is in the totality of that folks i don't know how many ages you see in dispensations uh before we might achieve anything close to that kind of um power in 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 that so um john one and nine now you yeah. know you know, I'm I'm taking a little a lot longer than I wanted with each one of these ages. I mean, with, with each one of these these aims, but um, you know, it is what it is. Go ahead, please. John one and nine. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Go ahead. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. See. He, he, he was in the world, he made the world, right? And the world knew him not. But we are capable now of knowing him. We're capable now of understanding this universal brotherhood of humanity that's in Yahshua or this Yahweh that is salvation, see? And we, we can do investigations, you see? Now, um, um, I, 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 there's really a lot more there, but I'm going to the fourth age because it's just to, ex to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, 
psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science, right? So they're saying, and that's why when I came down here, you know what I'm saying? I seen pictures of butterflies and, and pictures of, you know, human bodies and tabernacles and all this, you see different stuff and a price tag on a green chart. You know, I'm like, okay, man, you know what I'm saying? Someone had some fun one night, but anyways, here we are and we are going to encourage and how you see with a whole different understanding do I have now when it talks about to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, you see, because I have compared different books to different books. And I'm telling you, in that comparison, what you lose in language is, 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 is in unbelievable, you know? And in my job, um, pretty much, I know it's hard to believe for many of you, language is everything. It, it's, it, it's the whole uh, essence of what it's set up on a contract. You know what I'm saying? And every word in it and the weight of those words, okay? And I'm saying that that's just a physical example of the weight of this word and this contract or this covenant, you see, that we're in right now. And remember, it's the word that's cleaning me up. So yes, we are encouraging, and yes, we are, you see, um, promoting the study of the scriptures, but we want you to know that's not the word, you see, we're talking about. Those are the words of Yahweh, and we're going to encourage you to get in there, because how do we know about a lamb if we don't look back at the lamb that Moses, you see, um, and, and the children of Israel had to take out? That lamb had to be without spot and without blemish or no fault in that just like the messiah when john points him out as the lamb he had to be without spot we talked about this, without blemish right that's how we that's why we're encouraging to go back and look at those scriptures and understand what that lamb back there represented and what this lamb you see over here uh with the messiah you see what he represented and and what he what he meant when he said, I've come to fulfill or bring an end, you see, to that old way of, of learning. So, yes, we're going to promote, you see, and encourage to go back to those. And if anybody tells you contrary to that, they're dead wrong. See, they're dead wrong because that is, you see, how we are going to find and know Yahweh. You know, what are we going to do? Well, and pick daisies to find and know them? No. See? Yahweh has instilled that gift in mankind. That's what Paul's talking about. You see what I'm saying? You see? And collectively, across the whole country and world, you see, this body of Yahshua is being made, and it possesses the gifts, you see, that Paul's talking about, this universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah. This fifth one now, to, to extirpate current superstitions, skepticism, and ignorance. And I want you to know, you see, that, you see, I came in like that. Skepticism, you follow me? I thought I knew a whole lot. I was ignorant of the, the purpose of Yahweh. And, and I'm, 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 you know, um, Bruce had talked about, it was, it was also in the prayer, I should say, Andrea talked about, and it was in the prayer, you know, what's going on around us and in, 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 in the speed that the world is, is in things that are happening now, opposed to, you see, 50 years ago, let alone 100 years ago, you know, is intense. We never seen school, school, school shootings and, and all those things. You see, when I was a kid, we, we, we had bomb drills for crying out loud. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, not active shooter drills. Times have changed, you see. And I came in, you see, ignorant of Yahweh. I didn't know him, you see. I didn't even know that there was a universal brotherhood of humanity, let alone try to investigate it. My priest told me, leave that to him. See, But these things that we're talking about in our red are achievable in this age. The sixth one, 
to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Let's go to Ephesians 1, 9, and 10. Ephesians 1 and 9. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure. So listen, he has made purpose. known to this body that we're talking about, this, this, this brotherhood of humanity, you see, the body that Paul's talking about, to this body, right? Read it, Deb, again, please. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, he made to known to this body that we're speaking of tonight, the mystery of his will. Go ahead. According to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself. See, and he had purposed this way back in the beginning within himself. This is what he purposed. Go ahead. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in the messiah both now, which are in heaven and which are on earth even in him so he's you're at 10 right so he's yep. he's going to gather together in one yahshua the messiah right both in heaven you see and and uh, 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 i'm uh, above and in and down those in heaven and those uh uh that spirit that's in those bodies He's bringing them together. Now, why do we want to encourage, you see, the study of those scriptures? Because we would know back there with the children of Israel. You see, they had to bring a sacrifice to that tabernacle, right, for salvation. Or even back there, and there was no, not one of them that was capable of keeping that law. So they were all with sin, or they were all dead, and they had to be what? brought to that body that represents Yahshua the Messiah or Yahweh Elohim see for salvation that's what had to happen and they brought that lamb up up to that priest you follow me and that priest offered that lamb for sacrifice just like that lamb was offered you see being the Messiah for our, our on our behalf for our sacrifice go ahead uh, seven right to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, you see the dragon, Satan and his demons operating in the mystery of an earthly and mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. This mystery, you see, has been coming all the way down through and he deceived the woman in the garden, you see, and she partook of, uh, of a forbidden fruit. See, he's a deceiver and he twists. What he has done is he had taken something that Yahweh, according to his own purpose and his own will, had established, you see, for the children of Israel to follow for longevity and brought it over here on this side and fed it to us as it was salvation. You do this, you will be saved. You do this, you will be saved. That's why even when I sit in a chair and I hear somebody from the floor of IDMR telling me to do something to be saved, I got to tell you, I'm not in agreement. Now, will the Holy Spirit cause a vessel to do what is necessary for the purpose of Yahweh? Absolutely. But that ain't nothing written in stone of how you're going to see it, witness it, or feel it. That's just how this thing rolls. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Listen again, to earnestly contend for the common salvation. Were they earnestly contending for a common salvation when we read Paul's letters, when we read John, what they, what he wrote, you see, they surely were. And going to those people, you see, through that common salvation, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. 
there's a common salvation that can't be changed. And that is preaching the gospel in sincerity and truth. You see, now, nine, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua, the Messiah. And you, you see, have heard it like I've heard it. Why are you so hung up on a name? Why, why do you, you know, have to say that? I recognize him as Jesus. You got the wrong, you got the wrong one and you ain't got the savior. See, because as, I, as was explained, uh, you see, that Yahweh is salvation. If you don't understand that that's Yahweh is salvation, you, as we read that Paul wrote about, you don't know Yahweh. If you don't know Yahweh, there is no salvation. That's why we're down here preaching this gospel to help you, you see, and me and everybody else find and know something about our creator so that we could be liberated, so that we might be set free, you see. And that's why we're going to earnestly contend for this common salvation, you see, in faith that was delivered unto us, you see, by our vow, you see. And, and to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained that there was no other name. He did that. Remember, we were talking about his will. This was all according to his will. That was his will, that there was going to be no other name. So don't think, oh, you're hung up on it. No, yeah. <laughs> There's importance to be, you see, hung up on a name and, and, and to be, you see, persistent in saying what his name is and what his name, what his name truly means, you see, you see. Now, look, the 10th thing is to inherit eternal life now. That's achievable in this age, in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. See, we ain't there yet. That part, that's the hope that we have that we might, you see, rid ourselves of this physical body and put on, you see, that body of glory. Just as that high priest changed garments before he entered into the most holy place, Yahweh has purposed that his body, see, his children will take off this fleshly body and put on a glorious body, just as that high priest, you see, put on those be that beauty, uh, those that beauty of garments, you see, and this is taking place in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification. I I, I think she I don't I couldn't hear Peggy. I I don't know. I just heard a little blur, um, just now. Um, I apologize if somebody was saying or whatever, but um, I hope and trust you got something out of that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Kameni. Our next speaker, also from the Oceanside class, Dr. Dennis Wilkie. Hello, can everybody anybody hear me okay? I can hear you. Gotcha, okay. Uh, uh, Peggy, give me an idea what kind of timing I got. Um, whatever you need, Dennis, just go. Okay, all right, we'll see how it goes then. Uh, I listened intently and uh, to the, the first three speakers, and I wanted to continue with our scripture reading tonight to try to bring out a couple of points that struck me in the scripture reading. Now, let's start right at one, if you don't mind. Ephesians 4 and 1. I therefore, the prisoner of, Yah of Yahweh, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Now, right there, when he talks about walking worthy of the vocation, 
in Strong's Concordance, hang on, I want to pull it up here for a minute, the word vocation, actually it meant something different than what I anticipated. It means, it means a calling or an invitation. Now that's an interesting thing because I always looked at it as a vocation is a job. You know, where you go out and you work in a career. And that has some connection to this as well. But I want to talk about this idea of an invitation or a calling. Now, Paul said that he wants us to walk worthy of the vocation or the calling or the invitation wherewith we are called. And I want to talk about that for a minute because it's important to understand this calling. First of all, let's turn over for a minute, and I'm going to need a little help. I don't know if Bruce is listening. Uh, there's a scripture that Yahshua talks about uh, uh, that no man cometh to the sun, if anybody knows where that is. And I want to say it's in John, the sixth chapter, perhaps. I think it's Matthew 11, 27, Dennis. Okay, all right, I, I'll sit corrected. Uh, let me see if this is what you're thinking. All things are delivered unto me by my Father, and no man knows the Son but the Father, neither knows any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Is that it? Is that it? All right, no, that's not what I was after. I thought maybe it was following. Thank you. Thank you, Reva. What is it? But that that, that you read is important. 13, Thir John 13 and 6. Now, that was important what you read, Deb, because I'm going to tie that in. Okay. Uh, this is what he says in John 13 and 6. It's chapter 14, Dennis. 14? Yes. Okay. Joshua saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. All right, that's not what I'm after either. Okay, I'll tell, I'll quote it. I'll quote it yeah. and somebody can find it. What yeah. he said is, No man cometh to the Son unless the Father draw him first. Okay. That's the scripture I want. And I think it's in John the 6th chapter, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, okay. Try John 6.44. Okay. Uh, John 6.44. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. All right. There we go. That That's what I wanted. Now, when Yahshua talks about coming to him, unless the Father, and you can't do that unless the Father draw him, I want you to know that he's not talking about you walking up to him on the street, you know, and happen to say to him, hey, do you have, a, can I get a drink of that water you're drinking? We're talking about being drawn to the Holy Spirit. That's really what we're talking about here. We're not talking about you happen to walk by Yahshua from a natural standpoint. Now, he said nobody can come to Yahshua unless the Father draw him first. Now remember, Yahshua made the statement. He said, I am the light of the world. But it also says in John that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehends it not. So you could have somebody walking around with the Holy Spirit, just as radiant in knowledge and understanding as they can be, and somebody can be in a state of darkness and not comprehend the light that's right before their eyes. Now this sets up something. It sets up that there has to be some kind of divine intervention. And I want you to know that it is impossible for you to position yourself to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And it is impossible for you to do anything to earn the Holy Spirit as well. Now you have to be drawn by the Father. 
Now, when we talk about the Father in the sense, let's say we're talking about pure spirit or Yahweh, who is in control of all aspects of the purpose by the method of what we refer to as spirit law. Now, what I want you to know is that being drawn by Yahweh usually is an implication by the terminology that you are moved in a way that you don't even know what it is or who it is that's moving you. Because Yahweh is abstract in that state. And somehow that state has to be made concrete in your heart and mind. And you don't know that yeah, there is a Yahweh. I mean, John was talking about oh, he didn't know any of these things before he came into class and went through the ten aims. And none of us knew that Yahweh existed in a state that is likened unto that cloud in principle, meaning that he is abstract, but exists in a state of pure uh, uh, immaculate principle. And that the nine divine attributes are in are, are de de defining that pure spirit state that Yahweh is. None of us knew nothing about that. We never even heard anything like that. And I was raised in Catholicism too. I don't remember any sermons on pure spirit. And I want you to say that when we stumbled into this class, and somebody was talking about this last night in our uh, when I was in the Green Bay Zoom room, uh, how that many people have come down there to try to get somebody out of class. And so we didn't know what we were walking into. Now something was moving us unawares to our conscious realization of what that was that was causing us to be drawn to this teaching. And in some cases we were drawn to start with out of a negative intent. But Yahweh was able to use that to turn you around. And I can even say this, that Paul, who was persecuting the assembly and having the, the believers in Yahshua the Messiah, the brethren, he was having them put to death. And he's on his road, on the road to Damascus, on his way to do just that thing to more of these followers and believers of Yahshua the Messiah. Now, he's got an intent thinking he's doing the right thing in his heart and mind that God or Adonai, whatever he referred to him, Elohim, was pleased with what he was doing because of his understanding of the law as a Pharisee, thinking he was upholding uh, uh, God's righteousness, if you will. Now, he's on the road with this intent, and all of a sudden, we say he was knocked down off his horse. Well, Dr. Kinley once said, now it doesn't say in the scriptures he was on a horse, but he talked about how he was knocked to the ground and saw this light, this light that was above the brightness of the sun, and all of a sudden a voice speaking to him, and him caught up into eternity. Now, what you had that happening in that event was Yahshua inviting, inviting Paul up into the realm of eternity where he would commune with him. Now those followers that were with uh, Paul uh, fell down or were all of a sudden uh, 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 having some sort of an experience of something going on, but they didn't know what, but they weren't called up. Just like the, the 70 elders went up into that mountain, they saw the vision of Elohim right on top of Mount Sinai. And yet that didn't prevent that did not prevent them from saying, build us a calf. When Moses went up there for 40 days, they thought he had burned up in that fiery cloud. But now Moses was invited into that realm of eternity where the 70 elders that were on that plateau were not in the realm of eternity. They were still in the realm of time. They were having a vision without any revelation whatsoever. And those that were gathered around the base of the mountain didn't even get that much. They heard a voice. That's all they heard and saw no similitude or shape and form at all. Now, I'm showing you how that Yahweh is operating according to this, con this principle here of being called or being called by a vocation or an in invitation. 
Moses was invited into that mountain. That's the only reason that Moses went up there. And the one that invited him was the one that took him up. Now Moses didn't realize that then, but later, of course, we know uh, that Yahshua, the son of Nun, that is Yahweh Elohim, who was uh, uh, materialized walking around amongst them. And he helped Moses up into that mountain. Now it's the same thing with the tabernacle. You don't just walk up into the most holy place. It's by invitation only. And in order to walk into the tabernacle, to the most holy place, you have to have certain garments on. You know how like you go to uh, a fancy restaurant and they tell you that a tie is required. Or you have to have a sport jacket. Some of these restaurants used to be very uh, formal like that and you couldn't go in there and have dinner unless you had dinner attire. Now we know that when the, the Yash, uh, Yashua tells the parable about the king uh, or the man who invited the people from off the street into the wedding ceremony, one of them didn't have a wedding garment on. There has to be certain attire in order for them to go in with that invitation. Now what I'm showing you is, is that that priest when he went up there could not go up there just clad, you know, like the low priest were. He had to have the garments on. He had to have those garments of beauty and glory in order to stand before that Ark of the Covenant. Now Yahweh Elohim calls up Moses, and here's Yahshua that takes him up there and brings him into that cloud, which is eternity. And we know that he was told, Dr. Kinley said they were told to lay their bodies down, and that astral body... Uh, arose from there and Elohim can communicated with that astral body just like uh, Doc said he was in the cloud in the panoramic vision pamphlet he was in the cloud with Moses and his body was sitting in a rocking chair now what I want you to know is that this invitation that we're talking about or this calling is not you making the decision that you're going to climb the mountain and hop up in there and stand face to face with your creator. You don't come up without an invitation. And the high priest is the only one that was invited into that most holy place. Not the low priest. Now, Paul is caught up now in this vision that he's having on the road to Damascus. And a voice speaks with him. And he's having a vision. And that was the creator then causing him to be called. Now I want to work with a couple things on calling and I want to also work with what else is necessary in order for us to receive a revelation or I'll be more frank to receive the Holy Spirit. Now what I want you to do is I want you to go over first of all to Romans and I want you to go to Romans 8, and I want you to pick up, let, uh, let, well, let's start at 27. Romans 8, 27. And he that searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the Son according to the will of Yahweh. Now that's Yahshua that searches the hearts, and I got that back in the law and in the prophets, but I'm not going to take the time because I'm not working that train of thought right now. That he searches the deep things, yea, the, he tries the reins, it says, of the soul. Now that's Yahshua, watch. 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love Yahweh and to them who are the called according to his purpose. Now, what, all right, wait a minute, wait a minute for a second, Deb. Now, what we find out is that all things uh, are going to work out to for good to them that love Yahweh, to them who are called according to his purpose. Now, in other words, the calling isn't just arbitrary. Yahweh doesn't say, all right, I need five, I need five guys up here at the top of the mountain. I'll take you, you, and you. You know, just picking out five guys. It wasn't that way. Now, Yahweh brought those 70 elders up there. He brought Then he brought Nadab, Abihu, and Aaron up there. And Aaron was the first high priest. 
that had ministered in the tabernacle, but Moses alone was called into the mountain. Now what I want you to see is, what I want you to see is, he was called according to the purpose. Now that means that there was, Yahweh was going to use that vessel in some capacity to work a, uh, uh, a part of that purpose that they were going to be uh, uh, necessary in the scheme of things, in the purpose of Yahweh. It was necessary for him to bring one up into that mountain to show them that vision that he would later record in the book of Genesis and then so on, the, the, the five books of the Bible, uh, the first five books of our uh, Bible called the Torah, the law. Now what I want you to know is these, those vessels are not called because they're nice guys. They're not called because they did something to deserve to be called. They were chosen from the purpose, from the beginning, to be used in the purpose as an instrument that would be set up for them to work their part in the purpose of Yahweh. Now, all things are for the intent to show us the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose, that we might know him and understand something about him. Now, Moses has his part to play in this. Now, what I want you to see is this, that you're called according to the purpose. Not, it's just not an arbitrary thing. And even to the extent, look at Moses. Moses was born with the Holy Spirit. Now, it wasn't that he was a good baby and he didn't cry a lot and he didn't fuss with his mother. So uh, Yahweh said, I like this kid. I'm going to give him the Holy Spirit. That was preparation for his job in the purpose. The calling wasn't when he went up into Mount Sinai at the top of the mountain. The calling was from eternity. And what I want you to understand is that Moses didn't, how come the Egyptians are finding all these male babies and killing them left and right, and all of a sudden Moses they don't find? And he gets to a point in his, in his babyhood, if you will, that he's, you know, he survived, uh, you know, uh, being killed up to a point, and all of a sudden the mother knows, his mother knows we can't keep him here anymore, it's not safe. And all of a sudden, she gets this idea to put him in, create, make this ark of bulrushes, this, this floating little boat, and put, put Moses in there. Now, where did she come up with that idea? And what would make her think putting her baby, her Jewish baby, in this ark of bulrushes, who, and he was circumcised, would protect him from the Egyptians? Now, Yahweh is orchestrating this whole thing. Because he knows that when that ark is float, Yahweh sets it up so that ark floats down that Nile River and lands up in a point where it comes in contact with Pharaoh's daughter. Pharaoh's daughter all of a sudden uh, 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 sees this ark and looks to see what's in it and sees this tiny Jewish Hebrew baby. And her heart was pricked, if you will. And she just all of a sudden felt the love for this child, that she wanted that child to be her own child. Yahweh did that, ladies and gentlemen. He put that in her heart. As much as he put in uh, Miriam, or I can't remember Moses' mother name. I don't remember what it was now. Uh, anyhow, Moses' mother to put him in that ark and, 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 and float him down the Nile. Yahweh's orchestrating all of it according to the purpose because Moses was chosen in eternity to have the Holy Spirit in him where he later would feel compassion for his brethren that were being mistreated, do what he did by killing that Egyptian, and then flee into the wilderness that sets up the whole scenario of he's going from the palace to becoming a shepherd. A shepherd was a menial job considered to be beneath the Egyptians. And here Moses uh, grew up in the Egyptian household with the finest garments and, and, and everything else, royalty. And now he has to make a transition from having that life of all of that 
and decide to protect his brethren who he why 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 did he even bother protect them he wasn't even raised with the jews but yahweh put that heart of the holy spirit where he loved his brethren enough to take compassion and kill an egyptian that caused him to have to flee now he goes up into the wilderness he has to become a servant he becomes a shepherd and he's living a life of what you would call peace and tranquility in a sense. He's a shepherd looking after his sheep. And he's now all of a sudden approached with a vision in the burning bush. And the burning bush, that vision, that angel tells him, I want you to go down into Egypt. And if Moses didn't have the Holy Spirit, ladies and gentlemen... He would not have had the heart in him to be obedient to that commandment because he enjoyed, he liked being, living that tranquil little life that he had. Not to speak of, not to speak of that he came up with this idea. Well, gee, when I go down there, they're going to ask me what your name is. Well, where did Moses get the idea they were going to ask him that? Yahweh's got to put these things right down in his heart and mind. That opens the door for Yahweh revealing his name at that burning bush. This is all orchestrated according to the purpose. Now his tenure in the wilderness with the sheep was to prepare him to become the shepherd of the Hebrews, of Israel. Which is a figure in the purpose of Yahshua the Messiah, who is the good shepherd and the shepherd and bishop of our souls. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Now what I want you to see is when Moses was invited up into that mountain, that Holy Spirit that had been given to him from birth caused him to bear all the, the, the hardships and belly aching and, and negative attitudes of those people that he was bringing up out of there. To the point that when Yahweh was going to uh, destroy the, the, uh, the nation because of their uh, evil heart of unbelief, Moses stood in, stood in before Yahweh, Elohim, and said, blot my name out of your book because they'll say if you kill them that you brought them up here to destroy them. That's the Holy Spirit in there, ladies and gentlemen, that is orchestrating all of those those feelings, those responses, those way of, of, of demonstrating his, his nature of love. That's all going on according to the purpose. Because you cannot, after the day of Pentecost, understand the, net, the nature of Yahshua in any way, shape, or form if it had not been demonstrated from Adam on down to the time of Yahshua the Messiah by those what we call the patriarchs that laid down their lives, that were willing to suffer many things, uh, that was the, the Holy Spirit in each one of them. And that was the Holy Spirit that was in Abraham that caused him to believe when Yahweh gave the promise that he would have a son. And I want you to see that that's showing you, Yah it was Yahshua was the star of the show. Not Abraham, not Noah, not Moses, not Isaiah, Jeremiah, David, none of them. That was all the Holy Spirit in them that was being manifested through their vessel. Now, here they are. They're called. Every one of them. Yahweh called Noah and gave him the vision of the flood. And don't you know that when Noah went out and began to preach the destruction of the world by a flood, he had a great following. And as time went on, because they didn't know when the flood would come, they all started falling away and they started to mock him and they were scoffers. And he had to endure in a, that persecution from the fellow, the apostates now that no longer believed. That was Yahshua in him that caused him to be able to do that, ladies and gentlemen. And that's the way it is all the way down through. Every one of them were called. Yahweh called Abraham out of the land of Ur of the Chaldees there and gave him that uh, inheritance or that land that we call modern day Israel or Canaan's land. Now it was Yahweh setting up his purpose all the way down and every one of those patriarchs were chosen according to the purpose. Now here's something that I want you to know. That what has to happen first is a calling. But that's not the end of it. Go back over to Romans 8 again, that last verse that you just read. Romans 8, 28. For we know 
that all things work together for good to them that love Yahweh, to them who are the called, according to his purpose. Now when you see the word the called, you have to understand that that's designating and setting them apart from just plain being called. Because Yahshua says that many are called, but few are chosen. The called are the ones that were not only called, but they were chosen. Now, when Paul was caught up, if you remember what happened, Moses, I mean, Paul was instructed by Yahshua to go down to Straight Street and meet with Ananias there. And Paul was blind for three days. And when he got down there, before he got there, Yahshua appeared to Ananias and told him to go to a place and meet with Saul of Tarsus. And of course, he was a little bit shocked about it. He said, this Saul is a, you know, he's a pretty mean, he's a pretty mean character. And Yahshua says, listen, he said, I have chosen him. Now I want you to see, despite what Paul did, persecuting the assembly, denying the gospel that was preached to him by Stephen and others, Yahshua still forgave him, called him, and chose him. Because you have to be called and you have to be chosen. And nobody earns the right to be called and nobody earns the right to be chosen. Why? Because you were chosen before you were even put in the physical creation back in eternity. Now, uh, hang on for a minute. I want you now to go to another verse. I want you to go to 2 Timothy 1 and 9. Let's wait a minute. All right, go ahead and start at 9. 2 Timothy 1 and 9. Who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Yahshua the Messiah before the world began. Now, did, now those are some powerful words that Paul is speaking there. He said we were called with a holy calling. That means it was divine, ladies and gentlemen. And not according to anything you do or did. Both positive and negative. Because Paul, all you could say about him was everything he did was negative. And yet Yahshua still called him and still chose him. And then there were people that came to Yahshua and claimed that they had kept the law since their youth. What, what do I have to do now? And he said, sell everything you got, give it to the poor, and follow after me. And that man's head hung and hung down because he wasn't going to give up all his wealth and walked away. But listen, Paul is saying he has saved us and called us with a holy calling according to, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. That word grace is crucial. Because everyone that was called down through the law and the prophets, it was an act of grace that Yahweh had called them and chosen them. Which was given us, it was grace that was given us in Yahshua the Messiah before the world began. Your calling, your election, your invitation was already set up in Yahshua before the world began. And your path to coming into this class, I mean the, your whole life, led you up to the point where you were exactly in the, in the way that you were supposed to be to come into this class to be a witness and a manifestation of some aspect of the divine purpose of grace. And I think about some of us, some of the stories that many of us have been told of how it is that we came into this class, in this teaching. And some of it was absolutely horrifying, and some of it certainly was very laughable. 
I know a group of uh, people that, that I can name names that came down here to prove it wrong. And out there in their lives, they were living a life of riotous living, so to speak. And that's what Paul talked about, how he was an injurious man and in a blasphemer. That's what he was doing, and he was uh, proud and high on himself. That's where he talks about, if anybody can boast, I the more. But what I want you to see is, despite what you did, despite what you thought you had or what you were doing, he still called you out of darkness and brought you into this light according to his purpose that was set in Yahshua from the beginning. So you have been called and you have been chosen by him. When? Right from the beginning. That's before you've done anything, any good, any evil, any riotous living, or you were the nicest guy walking down the street. Doesn't matter. You were already called from the beginning. There is no positioning yourself to get the Holy Spirit. You have to be positioned. And who's doing the positioning? The Father, because no man cometh to the Son unless the Father draw him first. You were led by that Spirit unawares in your path to come down to Yahshua the Messiah to become a recipient of that Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, once you get your eyes open to what I'm talking about, it is a, a sight to behold, a beautiful thing, to understand how blessed all of us are and how he has known us right from the beginning. And so Paul is reiterating this to these people because he recognizes that the only explanation of why he was in their, uh, 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 in this position now of having the Holy Spirit. Go ahead, read 10. Verse 10, But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Yahshua, who hath abolished death, and hath brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. Read. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. Now he was appointed that. Who, who appointed him? Did he come up with the idea, hey, I'll take it, all right, fine, somebody's got to go out there and teach these people what's in the scriptures, because Paul knew what was in the scriptures before he had the vision. Well, I guess I'm the, guess, I'm the best guy to go. No, he was appointed. If you read over in Acts, the, I think it's the 26th or 27th chapter, where Paul refers to his experience of how he was knocked down and he's explaining how a light that shone above them and a voice from heaven spoke to him and this voice told him that he was going to send him to the Gentiles to deliver them from the power of the devil and darkness. Now it, he was an appointed teacher by Yahshua the Messiah. He didn't come up with, well I think I'm going to be a teacher. I think I'll be a preacher. John talked about how we all have the attributes of the gifts of the Spirit. And that's true. We have them, but some excel in a certain area, just as John said, and it's absolutely true. But here's why you excel. Not because your DNA makes you to be an excellent speaker, because you have good diction. That's not what it appoints you. The reason why you have an ex a, a gift that you excel in is you have a place in in the body of Yahshua, in the accomplishment of the purpose of Yahweh, that he is using you to manifest one of these gifts for the what purpose? And we read it further down. For the edifying of the body, and for the work of the ministry, and for the perfecting of the Son. None of the gifts are given to you for your own glory. I want to read that real quick before we go any further. Uh, if you're back over there, uh, keep your finger in 2 Timothy 1. Go back over there and cut down to where Paul explains in that chapter why the gifts were given. If anybody knows where that is. It's in that chap our scripture reading tonight. Yeah, that's what I want. Can you tell them where you're reading? Okay, so this is Ephesians, and it's uh, 4 and um, 11. He gave some apostles and some prophets, some evangelists and some pastors and teachers, 
for the perfecting of the sons, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of the Messiah. Now, do you see anywhere? Do you see anywhere? And it says that he gave some of those that they would shine and be above their their fellow brethren. No. So that brethren would look up to them and admire them. No. None of it is given for your glory, ladies and gentlemen. It's given for this purpose. If you have a gift, that is the Holy Spirit working through you for the rest of the body. Not for your glory, but for the perfecting of the sons. Which, guess what? As Yahshua is bringing things through you and out of your own mouth, you are learning while it's being spoken by the Holy Spirit through you. So it's your, for your per perfecting as well. And it's for the work of the ministry. Now people say, well, gee, there's no, you know, people say, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, under this covenant, there's no works. Well, they got that partially right and partially wrong. There is no work you can do to get salvation. But there is a work of the ministry after you have the Holy Spirit. Once you have been chosen and called and you have been anointed, you have work to do. And what is your work? To be a manifestation to one, to anybody, through your own gift, to give glory unto Yahshua and Yahweh. And when Yahshua and Paul said there at the top, when he says at the top that uh, I, I, I beseech you to walk worthy of the vocation for which you're called, for the in invitation and in and and, and uh, the calling that you have how do we do that by walking worthy well the way we do it is by uh being a uh, minister of this gospel and being a minister just doesn't mean you get up and have uh, the ability to really uh speak eloquently or run long trains of thought your demonstration of your very nature kindness to somebody patience with people long suffering forbearing, generous with people, uh, having hospitality to people. All of those things demonstrate Yahshua and his wonderful nature. And we all have a part to play. Dr. Kinley said that in this teach, in this purpose, he said, he said, whether you believe or you don't believe, you have your part to play. And so what I want you to know is this is what we're given those, those, those gifts for. Now read 13 there, where you left off. Ephesians 4.13 Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of Yahweh unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Yahshua the Messiah. Now watch. He said, now that we have all come to the measure of Yahshua the Messiah and the unity of the faith, right? Yeah. Now that we have come to that, right? Yeah. Nope, that's not what he said. He said, till we all come in the unity of the faith, which means it's still being accomplished. We are growing in this purpose, and none of us yet are perfect. We are growing towards perfection. And what we are growing to, they just had a symposium, I think it was called uh, uh, Unity and Yah, I think is what it was called. Is that right, down there in Florida? Now, what I want you to know is that the unity is going to come through our growth in the spirit of how we can be unified one to another. That's why it requires us not to be bitter with each other if we don't see something the same way that somebody else sees it. We have to learn how to accept the fact that not everybody sees what you see, and until Yahshua reveals it to them, they're just not going to go along with it. So we have to still be long-suffering, kind to one another, manifest some warmth to each other, and not be condescending and, and, and uh, uh, militant and wanting to war and uh, all these kind of things, see? Because we want to all come to the, a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of the Messiah. And that's what we're moving towards. We're not there yet. Even Paul in Philippians talked about that he had not obtained perfection yet. 
I think that's in Philippians, the second or the third chapter. Now, that being said, I want to go back for a minute to where we were over in, uh, we were over in, I believe, uh, I think we were in Timothy. Is that right? Yeah. And we left off there, who he saved us with a holy calling, uh, but according to his own purpose in Yahshua. Uh, let's see. All right. Now, we left off at 11. Read 11 again, 2 Timothy 1.11. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. That's what Yahshua, and you know why he was an apostle? He never met Yahshua in the flesh. Some people say, gee, I wish I would have been able to uh, be around at the time when Dr. Kinley was walking around. You don't have to be a uh, the, uh, at the time that Doc was walking around in the flesh because once you catch on to what this thing is about, you're an eyewitness to what the man saw and what was shown to him. And so Paul became an apostle because Joshua opened up and showed him how that he fulfilled the law and the prophets and the scriptures, and that made him an eyewitness. Got it? He got his teaching directly from Joshua the Messiah. And he was sent to teach the Gentiles. Keep reading, 12. For the which cause I also suffer these things... Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. Now, Paul was suffering, lady. That he suffered many things. Scorn and ridicule and persecution. And, of course, he was beaten and all kinds of things. Read. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Read. Hold fast the form of the sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Yahshua the Messiah. All right, all right, good. Now listen, let me take you over another. I want want you to go now for a minute to Second Peter, one and three. Now uh, let's start at two. Second Peter, one and two. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of Yahweh and of Yahshua our Savior, according as to his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Now listen, listen, me. listen. See, he has given to us all the things that we need to be saved. You follow? Hang on one second here. I, I called the wrong one. I'm sorry. Uh, wait a minute. No. Nope. That was a goodie. Well, let me, <laughs> let me check Peter one thing here. Uh, uh, did I call Second Peter 1 and 3? Yeah. Okay. So, all right. Uh, let's go back again where you were just reading there in Second Peter 1 and 3. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Now listen, listen. Let's talk about calling for a minute. Now, you've all had this experience sometime in your life where you see somebody that doesn't know you're there or in the, in a, in the area where they're at, and you call their name. And they might turn and look, and then they see you, and then they respond. They come to you, or whatever the case might be. So a calling is usually, and, and this is the way it works in the purpose, that you are taking somebody that's unaware of who it is that is in control of all things. And what Yahweh is doing is using our vessel to call these people. To the point where Yahshua then, they're brought to Yahshua who is the preacher. Not Dennis, not Rick, and not anybody else. Dr. Kinley once talked about, it doesn't matter who gets up because I'm the only speaker, he said. Now, once we understand that the Holy Spirit is the teacher and he's doing the speaking, 
Now, Yashua leads us down to class, and I started talking about people that came down here that wanted to try to disprove it. Well, as Doc once said, he said, I heard a voice from heaven. Now, that voice from heaven is not the voice of somebody's uh, physical tone or pitch or anything of that nature. But when you start hearing these things taught, and all of a sudden, Yashua opens up to your heart and mind that what you're hearing is the, is the absolute truth, undeniable truth, and it starts to make sense to you. You're hearing Yashua's voice, not the person that's on the floor. That is him calling you out of darkness or calling you out of this chaos and this ignorance that exists in the world. And Dr. Kinley used to talk about how that uh, people that are out there in the world, they're in a state of darkness likened unto Egypt there with the plague of darkness, that they're dar it's darker than a thousand midnights. There's no way for you as an individual to position yourself in the direction of the light or to direct, to get yourself, oh, oh you, you know, you turn around, you see a light, you walk towards it, then you get into the beam of light. No, because the light and darkness in the purpose that when you're in darkness you can't see the light but when you're in the light you can see those that are in darkness now I want to go over to John the first chapter and I want to read that for a minute John 1 and 1 okay in the beginning was the word and the word was was with Yahweh and the word was Yahweh. Mm -hmm. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. Mm -hmm. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Mm -hmm. In him was life and the life was the light of men. Right. And the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Now listen, listen, remember Paul and I'm just going to have to get that just to reference it. I want you to go to Acts the 20, uh, I think it's the 26th chapter, if I'm not mistaken, where he's t recounting the experience he had when he was caught up. All right, we're in 26, and I want you to start at, um, start at 13. Acts 26 and 13. At midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. Mm -hmm. And when you were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the prince. Read. And I said, Who art thou? Master, and he said, I am Yahshua, whom thou persecutest. Look, he didn't even know who it was was talking to him. All he knew was that something supernatural was going on here. Read. Arise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. Now here's the purpose. Read. To make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee. In other words, I'm showing you something now, and I'm going to show you more later. Read. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee. I'm going to send them to the Gentiles. Read. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness. Look, to he didn't say to get them to open their eyes. He said he was going to have to open their eyes. Now, when he met, said that, he's not really talking about Paul being able to do that. He's talking about him and Paul will do that. See, to open their eyes, read. And to, and turn, to turn them. them. Dark, and to turn them from darkness. Read. The power of Satan unto, unto Yahweh, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. All right, now we're going to go over to Colossians now, the first chapter. One and all right. Uh, started where, Dennis? Uh, hang on for a minute. I was trying to find Colossians here. Let's try this again. Colossians one, and I'm gonna say let's start at. Let's 
let's start at um, st read 10 because this this kind of starts where the chapter we just read picked up read Colossians 1 10 that you might walk worthy of Yahshua unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of Yahweh mm -hmm. strengthened with all might according to his glorious power with all patience and long suffering with joyfulness now listen Amen. you notice now you notice he said that you're going to be strengthened with all might according to his glorious power in other words he has the power to do that and cause you to be patient long suffering with joyfulness that's what the holy spirit in you is going to do and we want to walk worthy unto that meaning that we don't hold back and uh, the fruit that we have been given is for us to share so that the other souls that were foreordained and purposed to be saved in Yahshua can be partakers of that heavenly fruit. Now read 12, please. Giving thanks unto the Father who hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the Son in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the the kingdom of his dear son now notice that paul is talking about being delivered from that power of darkness because that's what yashua told him that his job was to go and deliver the gentiles from that place of darkness but here's the truth paul recognized that before he had this experience before the vision and the subsequent revelation he himself was walking in stingy black darkness that he was ignorant and didn't see nothing and didn't know nothing. And he said, by grace, Yahshua called him. And now he's saying, who hath delivered us, us is, he's part of us, from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now we know that the kingdom of Yahshua is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, but it's also that light. It's a kingdom of light. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Okay, now what I want you to see is that that's what our job is. So when we go down, when we go down to a building to have class, our job is to get on the floor and try to make this thing as simple as it can be for whoever's sitting in the audience. To deliver them from that darkness, here's the caveat of the whole thing it's done with simplicity complex uh, algorithms of information are not going to get it done you got to take them by the hand and walk them out of there that's why we go after the new people that's why if we're going to get on the floor and teach anything we want to be able to go back in and take it right out of the bible right out of the scriptures and walk them by the hand down through to see what you see. And when we get on the floor and we teach this the way we've been instructed, to use the scriptures and to make it simple and to show manifestations to get across the principle, we are doing what Yahshua has given us to do and that's how we are walking worthy for the vocation for which we were called. And that's what Paul did. Remember, when he went to the Gentiles, not one of them knew a thing about what was in the scriptures. So Paul had to take them down and explain to them the scriptures all the way down from Genesis down to Malachi. He had to take things and break it down and show them. There were no New Testament then. And that's why it said when he went to talk to people about Yahshua the Messiah, he would talk to them from morning, noon, and night out of the scriptures that's over in the book of Acts as well that's what we need to do is continue on breaking this stuff down and showing how the Bible is witnessing how that the law and the prophets are witnessing to the uh, uh, purpose of Yahweh the reality of Yahweh who he is and how he actually exists and the purpose of why the Messiah came into the world none of which we knew before we walked in here we didn't know the purpose of Yahweh uh, from, from Jump Street. We didn't know nothing about that. We didn't even know he had a purpose. We didn't know nothing about incorporeal being. 
giving a vision to Moses. We didn't know nothing about why they built a building out in the desert. You follow? We didn't know anything about why there was a lamb offered down in Egypt, other than it was a supper for the Jews to have every year. And we certainly didn't know why the Messiah came in, because we were taught that when Yahshua or Jesus came into the world, he came to institute a Christian way of life. All of that is incorrect and wrong, because they don't know the purpose. So it takes us, with that knowledge of the purpose, to be able to go back, lay the groundwork, for them to see what all of these things, why they happened, why Yahweh set up these things. There was nothing in the scripture that Yahweh did orchestrate and set up to show forth an aspect of his divine purpose and plan. That's why the first chart that I'm glad that Greg went over here and got is the chart on the pattern or plan of salvation. And what he's doing is bringing down through those circles, those are ages and that are being fulfilled in uh, dispensations, and he's showing it on the chart line upon line, precept upon precept, because all of these things that are on this chart are manifestations pointing to an operation of a spiritual purpose. And unless we break it down and go back and explain to him what, ha what, what happened there with Noah, why that whole thing happened in the Garden of Eden, and, uh, you know, and, and the, certainly the uh, migratory pattern of the Israelites and why uh, uh, the things that we read in the, in the prophets there with David, a shepherd, the temple being built, uh, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego and all those things, none of this is going to make any sense until they see it lined up and see that the manifestations are pointing to some aspect of a spiritual reality so that this thing becomes real to them in their hearts and minds. That's what our job is, as ministers of this gospel. Now, I got a couple of minutes. I'm going to go back over to our scripture reading for a minute, because there's a couple other things that we might as well hit on in there. And that was uh, uh, Ephesians 4, I think. Yeah. And we talked about one, but let me cut down, because we haven't got time to read the whole thing. Well, let's go ahead to 7, because I want to pick that up, too. Ephesians 4, 7. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of the Messiah. Now, okay, we're all given grace according to the measure of the gift of the Messiah. Now, in Strong's, when you look up measure, I just want to get that real quick. What it means is that it is a limited portion a limited portion. None of us have been given all of the grace yet. We have a limited portion. And what are the limits of? Are, the, are you limited because, well, gee, I wasn't good enough last week, so Yashua's not been so good to me lately because I, I, I've been bad. I've been naughty. That's not what it's about. Everything is about our job that he has called us for in the purpose of Yahweh, and he gives you the grace for you to do your job. He does not give you the grace to do somebody else's job. And we got to stop measuring people by our own measure of that grace. And he's given us grace according to the measure of the gift of the Messiah. Okay? Now I wanted to make mention of that point. And then I want to get down to... Well, you go ahead and read 11. Verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Now, the, he's talking about these particular things which involve usually speaking and so on, but I want you to know in other areas it talks about other gifts of the Holy Spirit as well, where it lists other things as well. And that's why the fruit of the Spirit is also a gift. And if you have that fruit abiding within you, you want to share that fruit with other people so that they can taste the sweetness of Yahweh's kindness and mercy towards us. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to give them, just like when they went to Canaan's land, they brought back that sheath of uh, fruit from the uh, land of Canaan that they brought back on staves for them to be able to taste the fruit of Canaan's land. They didn't have all the fruit that was up there. They brought back a sampling or an earnest of it and that's what we've got right now. We have the earnest of the Spirit. We have an earnest of that fruit 
that is being, uh, 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 if you will, harvested or being wrought within us. And we also are to share that. If we don't share it, then people are not going to understand the sweetness of Yahweh's purpose. And we need to share that fruit, whatever it is. If you are a person that is given unto hospitality, keep doing what you're doing because it's a reflection of Yahshua's kind nature. If you are a teacher, keep teaching. And if you're an evangelist and you're trying to bring people to class, keep doing that. And don't think because you don't have some of these other uh, things that are more, let's say, glorious in appearance, doesn't mean that you don't have the same glory in you, because you do. You have a little of Yahshua. What you got is you got Yahshua in you. That's what it is. And so, anyhow, uh, one last thing here. Okay, I don't have time to get into that. Talks about the body being fit together with every joint, and we're all members of a body, and we're being fit, fitted together to work together in unison, in harmony, for the glory of Yahweh and Yahshua. And he's talking about the world of not being like them who are past feeling, and so on. And when it says in 22 that you put off concerning the former conversation. Conversation doesn't mean speaking or repartee, if you will. It's talking about your manner of life. So when we come in here, there are things that we're going to have to change. There's things about us that are not becoming to Yahshua's nature. They do not reflect his divine nature. And any time we act out of accord with the divine nature... We are demonstrating our imperfection. Now, what we want to do, just like, uh, you know, you wear clothes because you don't want to expose your nakedness. Well, why would we want to expose our parts that are in us now that are not yet a, a, a reflection on the, the nature of Yahshua the Messiah? We want to walk worthy of the job for which we're called. Keep your problems hidden from the world. We don't want, the, especially the new people, to see your shortcomings. That is a negative, could be a, a stumbling stone for them to continue on in this teaching. And I tell you, it's a, quite a job to act in accord with this teaching, especially when you're in the presence of non-believers. But that's one of the ways we witness to the world, is by our conduct towards one another and our conduct the way we, we are with those people. And so you use some wisdom. You've been given wisdom and recognize that your job is to be a good reflection on Yahshua. Just like somebody was talking about recently about an ambassadorship and how the ambassador has to be able to reflect qualities that make him be respected in the country that he's being an ambassador to. Well, let's recognize that Dr. Kinley wanted us to act in a certain manner. I remember at one time he told the people in L.A., when they came, got out of class out of 1040 Grand Avenue and got out on the street, not to even light up cigarettes till they got in their car and drove away from the class. Because he thought he said, now Christians could be walking by or driving by and seeing you and then thinking we're a bunch of sinners down here because they're too ignorant, they don't know yet, that smoking cigarettes is not a sin. So he wanted us to try to be wise and not put a stumbling stone in their way. So I'm out of time. All I say is I hope you got something out of it. I hope it made some sense. Just let that love of Yahshua in your hearts flow uh, to your fellow brethren and your fellow man. man. And there will be a good report about you at the close of this age. So with that, I turn it back to the moderator. Thank you for the time and peace in Yahshua to all the brethren. Thank you, Dr. Volpe. That concludes this evening's uh, Zoom class. So end of the doxology and uh, remind everyone we do have in-person class this Saturday at the Rams Bramley Library in Jordan, New York, seven o'clock. And now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Yahshua, our Savior, on glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and for all time, we'll all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.